Good evening, evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order the regular city council meeting for Monday, May 2nd, 2016 at 7 p.m. Mr. Collier. Mayor Lowry. Here. Mr. McIntyre. Here. Mr. Reynolds. Here. Mr. Lindsay. Yes, here. Mr. Rick Lowry. Here. Mr. McLaughlin. Here. Mr. Craybach. Here. All present. Thank you. Now we'll stand. We'll have the invocation tonight by Councilman John Craybacher. Please just bow your heads, please. Heavenly Father, we come before you in a great country, great state, and great city. We thank you for the blessings you have bestowed upon us. Heavenly Father, we ask for great knowledge. Give us the knowledge to be able to do things that are for the city, make wise decisions, and give us the power to enforce them. In Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Now we'll do the pledge tonight. We'll use the flag here behind us. The pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, before we move on tonight, um, if you have the cell phones or anything, please put them on vibrator, turn them down, we appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Collier, you're going to go over um, what we're going to do here out of uh, order here, the ordinance 16-E for tonight, 16-18E. Yeah, prior to uh, the meetings, City Manager Bridge uh, handed uh, myself and all council members an additional ordinance, ordinance 16-18E. It's not on the agenda this evening, so as part of procedure, council would need to make a motion to suspend the rules of council to add ordinance 16-18 uh, to the agenda. So that's what we need to do. Thank Mr. you, Mr. Mayor. We need that now. We need to do, do that now. So yes. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion that we suspend the rules of council to address ordinance 16-18E. Thank you, sir. It was both of you at the same time, so. Oh, sorry. Second. Second. It's good. It's good. Who did the second, Mr. Lowry? Mr. Lowry. Yeah. 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 Any discussion? Any discussion, Mr. McIntyre? Hey, yeah, I had a question. Um, I'm sure you're going to, to read what, what it's about, but could we also make sure that um, we keep copies of this at the city building and also get one to the newspaper so that you know people can know exactly what it is? Sure. And give a read of it. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. McIntyre? Oh, I thought we were going to have a reading. Of the, no, no, no. We no. We're just we're just we're doing voting to vote oh, on the oh, agenda. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll oh, yes, then yes. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Oh. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. <clears throat> Mr. McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. Craybacher. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Uh, ordinance 16, uh, 18E will be put right in underneath 1617E on the agenda when we get there. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. And then we do we need to when we get when we introduce it. Thank we'll you. Get, when we read it later. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So now we can continue on. I will do actions on the minutes from regular meeting 418-16. So moved. Second. Mr. Craymacher and I had a second from Mr. McIntyre, correct? Yep. Not working discussion council before we move on? Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. Craigbacher? Yes. Mayor uh, Lowry? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Pass seven to zero. Thank you, sir. Communications tonight? None. None. Thank you. Sure. And we'll move on to the city manager report. Uh, Mr. City manager, our city manager, Randy Bridge. Thank you, uh, Mayor Lowry, uh, members of council, members of public. Always good to see uh, this many students in the audience. Um, I'd like to share with you the city manager's report uh, for uh, May. The first item up for discussion is Madison Street School. Um, at the last council meeting, I had brought in the uh, for council to entertain using block grant funds uh, for this year to tear down the Madison Street School. Um, in front of you, I have handed out the demolition quotes that I had found on uh, the former city manager's computer. 
Uh, I am in the process of getting updated quotes um, to satisfy the block grant requirements. We just need one quote. I'm going to get that from Jurgens. I uh, spoke with him this morning. Um, back in 2008, this is about 143. Um, I know there was some question in regards to the asbestos. So I went through Kim Jones's uh, files and emails and found that in 1995, some asbestos was removed from the boiler room. Um, however, then I have a memo that she sent out to council um, that's saying there may be some more asbestos in the cafeteria tiles. So, um, oh, there it is. This one for. Sorry. No, you're good. And then that she had projected it to be around 150 to $300,000 to uh, demo everything. Um, so really it's just an open discussion with council. What's your guys' thoughts on using block grant money and foregoing street repairs? Possibly, uh, definitely for 2017 and to possibly 2018 as well to get the Madison Street School demoed. Mr. Lowry. I would love to see it pour down, but I think that needs to be a citizen decision. Mm -hmm. I think somehow, some way, there has to be put questionnaires out, publicize it, and I don't think we can make that decision to take street money. Well, I think that you are elected to represent your constituents. Yes. I would have hoped that some discussion with your constituents had ensued last the past two weeks. Um, here's the deal with that. The deadline for the block grant application is May 6th, which is Friday. So. We're not going to be able to put together a public forum to get all that stuff done. Um, this is the way you look at it. The city won't have money to tear that school down for many years to come. Um, two years, my recommendation is to use block grant money to get it torn down. Two years of street repairs are not going to do that much damage. Mr. Mayor, no. My mate. Uh, I, I understand the consternation on what we need to do and the time frame that you're looking at. Uh, to me, it would make more sense to get a updated amount that it's going to take from the person that you're talking about, Mr. Jurgens, and mm -hmm. see what would happen. Uh, would it hurt to wait another year on this as far as doing the same thing? Would that be available at that time, I guess is what I'm asking. Uh, funds will be available. How they're dispersed is not up to us. Right. I think we got a lot of backing with some commissioners to do it this year. Um, I don't know what that landscape is going to be next time around. Um, if we don't do Madison School this time around, Mr. Pickett is prepared to put an in for Apprentice Phase 3 to be done. Hmm. Council, any other comments? Mr. McIntyre. I agree with Mr. Lowry on this. Um, and one of the things that we had when we came up with these various um, ways to fund street repair and the people mm -hmm. voted on it and, and whatnot. It was the money was going to go to street repair and be earmarked only for street repair um, one way or the other. If we're going to take money from streets and put towards something else, even if it's something we need. It's not the street levy money would not be used. Right. We'll still have our street levy yeah, money to do minor no, repairs. You no, know, I get that. I know that, that can't be used for that, but I'm worried about the perception if we say we have to have money for streets, but we suddenly have money to tear down the school. And I think it's needed, but um, and I would love to be able to do it, but I would also want to honor, I think, what the constituents said when, when they both voted for the levy and sent mm -hmm. us back up here in November, that they want us to focus on streets. Maybe it's something we can get more pricing, um, the updated pricing, because I know these prices, some of these are from 2008 and 2010. Uh, get an update, and we can kind of work from there. It, it's just a time constraint, and I really appreciate you looking into this. It's great that you mm -hmm. finally have an avenue to fix it, and I do appreciate sure. all your hard work. Well, keep in mind, too, with that block grant money, when it comes to street repairs, we're not going to do so many streets in this town because you have to use them in LMI, which is low to moderate income areas. We really don't have that many streets. As far as this block grant money, too, always has that alleviation of blight. <clears throat> we'll get more bang for a buck tearing down that school this year. Mr. Reynolds. We still will see street repaired. Correct. We're going to see minor street repair. Either you're not. I mean, your mm, I mean, how much can we possibly do out of that street levy money? We will. We will do less than normal, but we will still do some street repair. Yes. So if there's if there's a massive pothole, someone calls it in. Oh, I'm saying, absolutely. Yeah. None of that will go away. See. I, so all right, that was my question. So. Mr. Lindsay. I would like to know what the you said Funston 
phase three years? Prentice. Press, Prentice, I'm sorry. What was the question? What is the phase three on Prentice? It's the finished Prentice from the, uh, the rest the, of the street. Usually those are to be determined based on the amount of funds that CDBG will tell me, which they usually say, hey, we have 200,000, and I have in my, a bug in my ear of three projects. Here's the amount of money I can give you. What kind of length can you get? And then I'll submit that. So if we take and take down, use the money for Madison Street School, then we cannot do that street repair, correct? Is that what I'm understanding? Instead of doing maybe uh, 800 feet, I would only be able to do 400 feet because we would only be using our street levy and not street levy with CDBG funds. What type of shape is that street in right now? Can you tell me? Or? Those are all pretty bad over in that area. Yeah, uh, Bill. <clears throat> phase one was if you're if you're looking at Prentice, phase one was the east block, and it was like the, f the first half of that block. And phase two was the second half okay. of that east block, and then three would be probably the next half. The, the next half of block. the west block. Um, my my opinion is is those streets are god off when we've made continuous progress, on that street, <laughs> and I think we've been doing a lot of really progressive pro progress moving forward on a lot of streets. I mean, we're not doing a night and day where it's just completely amazing how many streets we're getting taken care of, but we're definitely moving in the right direction. I personally, I mean, I know that school needs to go. It looks terrible. Uh, it's an nice where people live over there, but, and, and I like what Bill said, the perception is that it's, it'll get spun that we're using street funds to tear down a building, and that could do some serious damage, even though that's not the case, but it, my opinion is it could do damage down the road as far as us being, you know, a relationship with our citizens. I, I would much rather see that street mm -hmm. getting taken care of completely before we tear down the, the school. I have a quick question. Sure. Mr. Lauer, go ahead, Mr. Reynolds. So, it, so sorry. So if we, uh, is it guaranteed that if we do not tear down the school, we will fix Prentice? Is that guaranteed that we'll get that money or is it just, uh, a hope we're going to yeah. have it, and that's what we're going off of. Is it a guarantee we'll, we'll have the money to fix the street, or is it kind of a hope? Uh, the money's never guaranteed Jeez. anytime, okay. but so we're basing with, it on a hope. What's that? So we're basing it on a hope, a hope instead of a guarantee. Is what we're saying. I mean, both. Yeah, they're both guarantees. I mean, you got you have you have Tom Hill at the county who says, well, I'm sure it's with other people that they prioritize. I think they're only getting maybe two hundred and thirty thousand dollars to spread out for the whole block. Or so what to do is they'll say this is the need, they'll allocate as such, and then that's how they divvy up the money. CDBG is typically in tar a couple targeted areas. One of them, major targeted areas, is the New Carlisle Northwoods area. We are almost the number one lowest LMI for that for the CDBG of Clark County. Um, so we do get a, a lot of eyes looking at us. So if, for every year that I've been service director, we have gotten funds, except for I think the last the year before last, because they give us extra funds to do a larger project. And in turn, well, we didn't take a project, so someone else didn't have to split their street up in two, because it's a lot better job to get one big one than it is to try and split something up in thirds. So if we were to wait then, and use this to take down the school, we could possibly get more money to, to fix the road completely if someone else takes that money this time. Let me come back to what you just said. Well, I have a feeling if, 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 if we do go through with the funds from Madison Street School, we'll probably take a large chunk of that block grant. So next year, we're not going to see much. I mean, here's the deal. If, if it's something that, and I agree with you, that maybe you should have a public forum, just do it in 2017. That'll give us more time to prepare. Um, I just had a meeting with Tom Hill. I know there's a lot of support with us getting that street, Madison School, torn down. Um, but final decision here, guys. Mr. Bridge, were those were the funds guaranteed for the school? <coughs> Nothing guaranteed. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm still okay. right. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Lauer. Uh, either one of you. I don't know which one of you can answer a question or should answer. Um, what does it cost to maintain, keep up, cut the grass, insurance? Oh, just a ballpark yes. figure for Madison Street School. I think I saw it's a, a couple thousand, maybe in life. I'm a, not sure. It's, it's, it's minimal. It's it not all that. Something like five grand a year. If that. Something like okay, a couple thousand dollars a year. Okay. Okay. Um, and of course, that's based off how many times people break into it, how many times you got to go up there, so it can fluctuate year year to year. Right. How long has the school been there? A long time. Not 2009. Well, how long have we been trying oh, to get it I'm sorry, 2003. 
Well, since we purchased it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and <coughs> you know, I want to see it go away more new than mm -hmm. it is because I hated how it came down and we won't go through all that again that it was bought it should have never been bought there was two people stopped it from ever being renovated and it needs to go away but I cannot take away street money to do that I mean that's great but the guy up here on 34th street so we don't have to mention anybody okay who never sees Madison Street School he could care less but I guarantee you he's going to jump up and down when we don't fix potholes, and he's absolutely right. Well, if we use black grant money in the year's future, it's still going to come out of street money. But I'll be uh, honest with you, I think it's up to people to be educating their constituents on black grant money versus levy money. Right. You know, once you make that clear distinction, <clears throat> you're not losing, you're not using street levy money. Right. To and tear and that I realize down. that. Yeah. You know? And I think everybody here realizes that. But when I look around at Springfield, Fairborn, all these other cities where they are getting money to tear down buildings just like that. Yeah. We need to start pushing some people to do this. Well, we're okay, a small as I city. said before, you know, a county commissioner sat right in his room and told me he was going to get on it. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard from him. Well, they, they we're a small city, so we don't I understand. we don't impact a lot of people when it comes to a county wide thing. You know, Fairborn, they're in a different county than us, but it's right. a big town. So all that's, you know, they take into consideration how many people it's going to impact. If we I had agree. tripled our size, we we'll probably see a little <coughs> above when it comes to these grant monies. I agree, but sure. I still think there's other avenues that sure. can be taken. Absolutely, I agree I think with you. that's what we need to do. The old I'm saying next. is the wheel <laughs> that speaks the loudest disagrees. So okay. I think that's what we need to start doing. All I mean, right. We've got tax dollars out there. <laughs> Mr. Kraybacher, go ahead. Please. Okay. When we were talking about the other house on Madison Street, across the street from Madison Street School, you said it was a safety issue, and it's still a safety issue with Madison Street School. You know, um, I've been over there a lot, so I see windows still not boarded up and broken out, and et cetera. And I'm sure people going in there. I guess there was a fire, now the roof leaks, and it's like a swimming pool on the inside mm -hmm. when it rains. You know, the place is an eyesore. You know, I would love to see the thing torn out. You know, uh, on the other hand, you've got also the streets, who is also a safety issue, you know, a, a safety problem. Um, the one thing that I see, if I remember right, and you can correct me if I, is those block grants are getting less and less and harder and harder to get. You know, and I'm afraid that next year we probably, you know, would be harder to get. But again, uh, this year, you know, if we finish Prentice, you know, that would be a good feather in our, in our cap. You know, and that would be a good thing. I guess I'm more in the favor of waiting and giving information out, mm -hmm. like Rick says. But, you know, we do need to really work hard on that in the next, in the sure. next year. And when you guys are so, thinking. That's a risk, though, mm -hmm. of not getting it next year, though. It's a risk. Well, it's a risk this year, too. It's so, a risk this year. But one of the things I would encourage council strongly to start thinking about is economic development. Prentice sitting a year not being fixed is not hindering economic development. That school over there sitting there is hindering economic development. As soon as that school goes down, somebody will buy that parcel of land and put houses there. You know, so you got to kind of think outside the box. And that's yeah. not a guarantee either. You won't have somebody lined up. But that's what's going to be used to that problem. But if, you know. Prentice, but if Prentice sits another year, they can also have five people move out. Exactly. Because well, they're tired of living on that road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say that. Uh, no, I, I see what you're saying. And I'm not sure, you know, and I don't think either one of us will, mm -hmm. that because Madison Street School is tore down, they're going to sell that property. I've yeah. been in Twin mm -hmm. Creek for 10 years. And from day one, I've heard these lots are going to sell. They haven't sold yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not necessarily true. Really. I, you know. But I tell you what, it's not going to sell the school there. That's you're absolutely right. That's true. I, I give you that. So, I, that. I mean, I, like again, I was just encouraged the council to start thinking outside the box and being real creative when it comes to these grant opportunities that we have. Again, apprentice sitting for another year is not going to do any damage. If five people move out, we'll have five people move back in. It's a high rental area. Mm, not you sure know, about so. That. It's, it's, that's where all, that's a big renter area in our town. People come and go out of those houses all the time, you know, but I, 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 I see, I see the point. If you guys want to wait a year to do the right thing and get people's opinion and by all means, that's, that's your guys' right and authority to do so. 
my job is to pre present the information to you mm -hmm. and let you guys make a decision on this. Gotcha. I don't know about the rest of it, but I think that's what we should do wait a year and let the people decide. Mm -hmm. I, I've always said, I don't like spending other people's money unless I know what they want to spend on. No, this is block grant money, so it's from <clears> the federal it's, government. It's tax dollars. It's federal government money. It's tax dollars. Okay. Mr. Lindsay. I remember last year there was a lot of discussion on Madison Street School that council <coughs> at that time had to listen to and put up with. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the citizens would like to have the school gone. I'm not sure these estimates we are looking at here are anywhere close to what it would be. Uh, I think it's probably north of the 195 now, since it's five, six, seven years old. The I can only assume, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, you put a lot of research into this to the block money, block grant, and redevelopment of that. So you probably have a good idea what could possibly happen with this. And, you know, I'm just going to finish with, I know last year council got beat up over Madison Street School. So that's all I got to say. Mr. Evans. I had sent you those articles from the Dayton Daily News and things about how other communities were getting money. It was because those communities were getting money because their state representatives was requesting the money. It was a biennium budget. That's the time that you try to, these state reps, you go call them and you try to get all this money t together, pork for your areas, what they call it, pork barrels projects, and to get the, bring home the bacon is how they say it, up in Columbus. Unfortunately, I called our state rep. We missed it because we have to start doing this, planning out this almost two years in advance. So now we're out from any state money for two years. But I think that we need to keep up with Mr. Kaler for the next two years, talk with him. He, I spoke with him. He said, if you want to do it, you've got to get your whole council behind it. You've got to get local uh, citizens behind it. So I think we should start calling our state rep and say, hey, in two years, because we, we missed the boat this time, but we might meet it next time. Sure. This is the first time that yeah. a state rep in our area has ever even talked about bringing money to, back to the district. Yeah. Typically, you know, we've had John Boehner for 20 years. Well on and off of our area. He doesn't take pork barrel. He didn't take money from the feds. Uh, our old state rep never called us or talked to us about possibly getting money. So I think we now we have a chance. Yeah. Yeah, two years. Sure. So I'll so. start working. All right, thank you, Mr. Bridge. Um, Fair enough. Sounds like that's uh, on hold for now. All right, moving on with the city manager's report. Please, uh, police discussion. Police cruiser is in, so thank you citizens for passing that in. Uh, please levy. Um, because of that passage of the levy, we were able to buy a new cruiser. I will have that cruiser at our next council meeting, um, just because they're more generally heavy, heavily attended, and then we'll actually have a police officer on duty for that night. Um, Deputy Cruz, who's driving that car, is primarily going to be used for first shift, loves it. I've seen the car. It is a very nice car. I actually sat in the back, went for a ride. It is a comfortable <laughs> spot to be in that back. Uh, I'm five foot seven and a half, and my knees are in the back of the thing. So. Uh, criminals, sorry if you're a big guy, but it's not going to be an easy ride for you. Uh, but for the driver, very comfortable, very nice. Um, update on the 2010 Charger fire. I met with ERS, which is Electronic Restoration Services, on April 25th. Um, let's be honest with everybody. He showed up thinking he was going to a house, saw the car, and said, we don't do this. So he had suggested that I email him a list of all the electrical components. Uh, in that car, so I contacted Morfield Township, who we bought it from. They sent over some stuff. I am still here waiting, waiting to hear back from our insurance adjuster for any dollar amount. So once that dollar amount is put in front of uh, me and Mr. Kiko, um, we'll make our decision about what we're going to do with that, and we'll let council know. If it's <coughs> again, it's we're waiting on that numbers game. If it's going to be a fourteen thousand dollar check that we're going to get back on that, the question is, do you put that fourteen thousand dollars down as a down payment for a new car? Or do you sink it back into a 2010 Dodge Charger? You know, so some those are some of the questions that we'll be answering. Uh, once I have that everything in front of me, I'll put it to council. Um, but that car is still not clean, um, so it's out of service. But it is not creating any kind of issue with lack of vehicles for our deputies that we have. Okay. Um, internet speed update on that. Um, you guys had approved the ordinance to up the time order package. Um, it was not fast enough, so I did cancel that. So we are back to our previous speeds and our previous price. Um, but we did try it out. Uh, moving on, under informational items, 
This has been on for the third. Mr. Bridge, yes. I'm sorry to cut you off. Mr. Lauer had a question. I'm going to ask a question about the internet speaker. Yeah. So does that mean now the cameras that are here are not going to work properly? And no, they'll work. work. The internet speed was just to get the data from point A to point B. And that's what I'm saying. So now what happens? The camera's not going to do it. You have to take a burn physical it on. person to run it back and forth? Or? What's going to happen is it will be burned on a CD. Okay. And then one of his guys from the county will come get it when needed. Okay, so they'll have to burn it every day when their yep. shift is over or whatever? Shields crews will be that okay. one contact who will burn all the CDs. But she okay. can do that out of our substation. Okay. Yep. And doing. my concern was before is she got to leave and take that Physical. to the county. Okay. She's not. Okay. That's good. I don't want her out. That's, I don't think she should be that's no. 20 minutes there, 20 minutes back. That's 40 minutes of not protecting our streets. Exactly. So okay. that was ended. Okay. Thank yep. you. Sure. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Yep, we're good. Good to go? Awesome. Um, this next one has gone to the last three council meetings, but I think it's very, very important. Our fire department has free smoke detectors to give out. So if you, your neighbor, your grandparents, anyone that you know that's in the city limits that has a faulty, old, or no fire uh, alarm at all, please give our fire station a call, 845-8401. They will actually come and install it for you. He has about 100. He maybe probably has about 80 left. Don't quote me on that number. But again, it's a free smoke alarm, so please pass the word along to your neighbors. <clears throat> yes? I do believe, and I, I will leave that up to Mr. Trusty. They can make that decision. Sure. Stress again that it's free. Oh, it's free. <coughs> free install. It's pretty cheap. Sure it is. Yep. And moving on, 4-H fundraiser, Denim and Dust H4H Club is in the packets. They're having a fundraiser this Friday, May the 6th. It's at Crossroads Baptist Church. Flyer is attached, so please take a moment to look at that. If you guys want the information, just give one of the, come up and see me and I can give you this or talk to one of the council members. Also got a, here a, a printout from Tecumseh High School and it is about their all-weather track. I do believe at one of the last intergovernmental meetings they had a presentation on that. It is completed. Um, I haven't physically seen it, but everybody says it looks they fantastic. They were rained out as far as on the actual. On the very first meet, go, go figure, yeah, so now rained they're... out. So um, basically this is a thin saying thank you for everyone taking part. Um, so again, if we get a second, go check out the new all-weather track at Tecumseh High School. And the last thing on the city manager report is the new Carlisle health stats. Um, I don't know if any of you students have seen the new Carlisle Healthcare Facility downtown, but about once a month they send me all the stats about the citizens that use that. So it's pretty informative. If you have more, want any more information on that, just come see me or come see one of the council members. And I do believe that's all I have for the city manager's report. Thank you, sir. Any questions yeah. for the city manager before we move on? Oh. All right, thank you, Andy. Yeah. Okay, moving on to, let's see here, manager report, comments from the members of the public. If anybody in the audience has any questions or comments, you're free to go up to the podium. And Nancy, we'll start with you. wanted to say, seeing how I wasn't overly fond of the uh, levy for the new police, that we had a, um, a stranger in our neighborhood that seemed to be hanging around. And we called, and the police were there in under five minutes. So I just wanted to pass out a warm fuzzy to our police department Great. and say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's good, good to know. Sir? Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, Charles Patterson, Clark County Combined Health District, 529 East Home Road, Springfield, Ohio. Um, you have two items on your agenda this evening that I would uh, like to make a comment on. Um, first, you have resolution 16-03. Um, that is the uh, smoke-free areas in your parks. Um, I appreciate your consideration of that. I know that there's been a uh, previous discussion about this issue. I know that there's been um, issues brought up about people's rights, et cetera, and uh, I certainly understand those arguments. Um, the thing I might bring up tonight is that um, the Smoke-Free Workplace Act went into effect 
uh, several years ago, and in looking at statewide data after that ban went into effect, uh, what we found is that cardiac issues, meaning emergency room visits for cardiac natures, actually dropped after that ban in, went in place across the state of Ohio. Now, why is that? That's because people were not able to smoke as many cigarettes, and yes, their rights for smoking cigarettes were infringed inside a building, in a workplace, uh, but we actually saw positive health effects occur from that. And what we're asking you to consider this evening is, in fact, something that protects our children specifically, uh, but also may limit the number of cigarettes that some people will smoke during a day, which in turn will be good for their health. So I leave you with that thought on, on that specific issue. Also, uh, you have uh, another ordinance, and that would be ordinance 16-17E. Um, would appreciate your consideration of that. Uh, our board has looked at that and would be more than happy to partner with you uh, on that additional playground equipment. Uh, we appreciate the sweat equity that, that you're willing uh, to put into that, and um, we would greatly appreciate uh, your consideration of that resolution this evening. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions, but that's all I have for my formal statement. Council, any questions? Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate Thank your you. time. Any other questions or comments from the audience before we move on tonight? All right, thank you. <clears throat> All right, uh, let's see, committee reports, none tonight, and we'll move on to resolutions. Mr. Collier. <clears throat> Resolution 16-03R, introduction of public hearing and action tonight. A resolution establishing, establishing tobacco-free zones within the public parks of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Reynolds. Move to adopt ordinance, sorry, resolution 1603R. Second. Mr. Bridge, did you want to? Yeah, yeah, I'm just taking a note, sorry, sir. Yeah, no, you're fine. I, just, I didn't Who know second if you, that. If you, wanted, Mr. To, Mr. If you wanted to touch on it before we got into yes, it. Yes, absolutely. So, as an explanation to this uh, ordinance, Mr. Patterson, thank you so much. Ms. Dollinghouse, thank you so much for being in attendance tonight. Really appreciate your company. Uh, basically, the resolution in front of you is an amended of the first one that we put in that we tried to ban smoking in all the parks. Period. I heard what council had to say about um, just having maybe certain areas restricted. So the resolution in, in front of you tonight is that is that, is that exactly, essentially. Um, right now I am proposing a resolution to allow no smoking within 20 feet of um, any city operated parks and facilities, including restrooms, spectator and concession areas, playgrounds, swimming pools, athletic fields, court, open air shelter, and special event venues. So the shelter house would not be included in that. We're looking at playground equipment, tennis courts, volleyball courts, the little open air where Chautauqua has their conference. People aren't allowed to smoke in the pool as it is. Um, Haddock's ball field already has known smoking resolution, regulations with their agreement. Um, so again, I think this is a really good way to say New Carlisle is setting an example. I think years before in the past, if we've always either followed or not done anything, this is a good way for us to be. If I remember, quote me if I'm wrong, we'd be the first in Clark County to have this. To have a resolution passed, yes. National Trail's working on theirs currently, correct? correct? Sure. Again, it's our way to promote a healthy lifestyle coming from a smoker myself. You know how I learned to smoke? When I was a little kid. That's exactly when I learned to smoke. Um, so this is very important for the overall health of our community, not only now, but in the future. So I would greatly appreciate if council would give this a consideration and pass it this evening. Mr. Reynolds. No one can ever say I'm not up for a good compromise because I voted against it the first time because I, it was an all-out ban. But this, this makes total sense, so I thank you for that. I plan on voting yes, and I encourage all my fellow members to do so. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Mr. Matthews. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, one of the things that came up last time as we were talking about um, 
some of the, the issues with rights. Um, the gentleman who just spoke sort of talked about that. I just want to point out that this doesn't ban a person, it bans an activity. And so there's a big difference there. We're not saying if you are a user of a nicotine product, you can't enter the park. We're saying you can't use nicotine in the form of smoking within the park, within those limits sure. um, that are laid out in the resolution. And so looking at this and dealing with rights, I always look and say, does this create an undue hardship for people? And I think about undue hardship in, in the realm of sm uh, smoker and then the non-smoker. For a smoker, um, I believe that the reason you would smoke is because you need that nicotine. And so if you were going to go to the park in this resolution over the past, there's still different options for receiving that nicotine, the, supp or the uh, supplemental things such as the, um, the patch or the gum or lozenges, whatever it may be. Um, or you could uh, you know, also leave the park and, you know, beyond the, the sure. range that's specified here. But if I'm a non-smoker and I want to go to the park and I don't want to breathe in the smoke, which has been shown secondhand smoke, causes all sorts of issues, carcinogens and whatnot. Um, that does create an undue hardship because if I want to go use a playground equipment, go by the swings, whatever there is, and there's a smoker there, I can't approach that area without breathing in that smoke and doing harm to me. And so while it does not bother the smoker because that's a choice, a legal choice that they make, it creates an undue hardship for the non-smoker. So when I look at this law and or this resolution that is in front of us today, I see that there's a number of different options for a smoker, whether that be refraining, using a nicotine replacement product, or going beyond the bounds. But for the non-smoker, their other option is to not use that city park property in which they pay for. And um, I think I think that passing this would allow everyone to use the park without having to have um, those issues, without creating undue hardships for anyone. There's alternatives for the smoker, and the non-smoker can feel free to use it without having the breathe-in chemicals. Um, so I, I want to thank you for, for bringing this compromise sure. here. Thank you, sir. Council, any other questions? Mr. Patterson, real quick, what uh, park systems did you say was working on there? Um, Ordinance? National Trail. Right now, National Trail, which, which has park, park systems all across. Park are, are they looking for a full band? Yeah. Just a partial, kind of like what we're looking at? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Collier. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. Craybacher. Yes. Resolution 16-03 passes 7-0. to Thank you, Council. Right, moving, moving on to ordinances whenever you're ready, Mr. Collier, and we're going to start off with 16-18E, uh, e, correct? Correct. Okay. Whenever you're ready, take your time. I just need to make sure I sign off on these ordinances as we go. You got my name as Mike. Excuse this one. Got to use my fancy paper. Uh, Ordinance 16 15, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on May 16, 2016. An ordinance authorizing the disposal of unproductive city property. And again, that will be uh, discussed and voted, voted for at our next meeting. Ordinance 16 17 E, introduction, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for the placement of new playground equipment in Smith Park of New Carl, Ohio, and declaring an emergency. Council? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Reynolds. Move we adopt ordinance 16 17E. Second. I heard a second. Mr. 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 Lindsay. Mr. Lindsay. Okay, thank you. An explanation of this ordinance. This piggyback it packs off the presentation that Ms. Dollinghouse and myself did. Uh, when we presented the new playground equipment. Um, again, this is a huge win for the city of New Carlisle. Um, the ordinance in front of you is just the contract governing that playground equipment. Um, so again, the playground equipment is going to be right outside here. Um, the only thing the city has to uh, perform is the sweat equity, which is the supplied wood fiber, and then the supplied play curbs. We'll install the play curbs with the fiber in there, and the company will come and set the playground equipment up. Um, just to piggyback on this, even though it's a separate from this, but it still goes in hand. Today, me and Mr. Kiko and myself started looking at um, additional place swing sets to go on the side of it, um, and that would include a handicap swing, a baby swing, and two regular kid swings. So we're looking into that as well. 
Um, again, that complaint from our citizens is when we're here at the shelter house, our kids are so far away playing that we're uncomfortable with them having that far away. Mr. Bridge, I have a question. You, sure. You're pointing this way. I don't know if it's just general. Is it going to go over here to this side here, or is it actually going to be out uh, this it's probably, I'm sorry, like on the other side of the, where the bike racks are and all that. Gotcha. But, okay, yeah, thank you. Right, on, right there. Mr. McLaughlin, do you have a I just wanted to thank you for all your hard work and also thank the county for stepping up and helping us to get that done. Thank you so much for all your hard work, both of you. And uh, Mr. Bridge. Hello, Mr. Bridge. Take. Mr. Bridge, are you here tonight? Yes, I am. What's going on? Okay. Just <laughs> <laughs> I'm multitasking. I'm multitasking. I was you bending. are multitasking. I was bending his ear. Yeah. Again, I just yeah, wanted yeah, to right. thank you. I know you put a lot of hard work, a lot of time into it. That's something that's going to be fruitful for all of our citizens. For years thank to you. come. Um, yes. But I cannot by any means take all the credit for myself. It, you, most of it goes I to Ms. Dollinghouse right, right back there. Absolutely. And it's gotten a lot of feedback as far as people are really excited to hear about that. Sure. I, I've gotten asked, actually, someone wants to do their 20th um, high school reunion here. And they said, will the playground be put in in time? He's like, I hope so. Hurry up and <laughs> if Ms. Dollin House was not employed by Clark County, I can guarantee you we would not be having this. You, so, Mr. Patterson, you got a you got a jewel over there. You, you told him it was for kids only, right? The, yes. The, 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 the yes. Tool, tool, <laughs> 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 hey, Randy. Yeah. Randy. <laughs> Randy. <laughs> Randy. <laughs> You're yes. Mr. Bridge. Stop oh, Mr. talking Bridge. to me, both of you. So, <laughs> he, he only answers <laughs> by Mr. Bridge. So. Um, one thing: how is it going to be attached to the ground? Is it going to be concreted in? And number, I have number no two thing is it'll be anchored. It hovers. It'll just sit there and hover yeah. above it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's okay, specs I'm to sorry. install. There'll, there'll definitely be specs to yes. install. <clears throat> no, no, I just want to know. Uh, because I have seen in other parts that the, 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 the concrete comes up. Sure. Uh, that, you know, and it does break. Island Park is a good example of that. Yeah. They, they had a problem with theirs. Okay, another thing is you said wood shavings. Uh, and I assume that's going to be what's going to be underneath it. And I think when Parks and Rec was looking at equipment before, they were looking at other materials besides that, like uh, the tires and everything else. Tires. Yeah. yeah. Is, is that a possibility? Because is that better than it lasts longer than the wood shavings? I know back in the day, recycled rubber it used to be extremely expensive. No matter how many times you had to add the, uh, the state certified mulch. You could add in multi way multiple times, but that rubber over time um, with the uh, ultraviolet rays and everything would degrade it, but I haven't looked into it in a couple years. Okay. Well, that's something in year, a year down the road, if we want to, we can add that later. So, yeah. I, I, I have seen the, the tires used, the shredded tires. That can be a little bit dirty Yeah. Okay. for the kids. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's other material, too. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not to find out that stuff. Council, any other questions before we go to the vote? Mr. Collier, whenever you're ready, please. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. McLaughlin. Definitely. Mr. Craybach. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Ordinance 16-17E passes 7-0. Thank you, sir. Uh, Let me find the next one. Mm -hmm. Moving on to other business whenever you're ready, Mr. Mm -hmm. Collier. We got that no, one we're adding. Got that yeah. emergency. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Ordinance 16-18E, an ordinance amending ordinance 14-13E regarding electric generation supply services for use within the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, and declaring an emergency. I'd like to make a motion on ordinance 16-18E. Second. Nobody second. <laughs> second. <laughs> 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 Who made that second? I heard about Mr. McLaughlin. Mr. McLaughlin. And explanation of this ordinance. Um, a while back, I brought the ordinance from uh, Miami Valley Lighting that reduced our 5% discount because of the relationship that Miami Valley and DPNL Energy had. IDS had bought in DPNL Energy, which made that relationship go away. Um, so basically, right now in front of you, and this is not normally how we do um, ordinances. Just so you um, kids and, and the audience know, um, usually the contract is it's attached with it. Council can review the contract and they'll give me permission to sign it. This is a unique situation that we are locked. We if right now we pay 5.39 cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, as in, in June of 2016, 
that's going to go up to 5.65 cents a kilowatt hour. Us signing this will lock us into the cheaper rate of 5.39 until May of 19, I do believe. Um, the reason it's in front of you the way it is, um, our legal and their legal are going over some of the fine print here. Um, if you guys approve this ordinance, it does not mean I'm going to sign this contract. When I'm done doing my research and done discussing this with, Lynn, with Lynette at that point in time, I'll have the authority to sign it because you guys either said yes or no. Um, but again, this is under a time stamp. I don't want to have to call a special meeting and I don't want to have the chance of losing that lock-in rate. It's all based off market demand. So that's why it's in front of you the way it is today. Thank you, sir. Council, any mm -hmm. questions? Mr. Lindy? Mr. Bridge. Yes, so sir. So what you're saying is if you can find something cheaper than what this offer is, you will take the cheaper offer if we pass this tonight, correct? Well, if we're in our time, yes. If, if we can get out, we're stick with IGS regardless. They bought DPNL and right. So I have to look at the DPNL energy contract, usually a out clause 60 days advance. I would go with another company at that point. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, sir. If the customer service and reliability is there. I'm not going to take a cheaper rate than their customer service is horrible or stuff like that. If it's going to be a headache, it's all going to be based off good reviews. Most of the time you don't know about the customer service until you're there and have a problem. <laughs> True. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yep. Council, any other questions? <clears throat> Mr. Collier. Mr. Craybacher. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. McLaughlin. Yes. Ordinance 16-18E passes 7 to 0. Thank you, sir. Move on to other business whenever you're ready. Okay, grabbing my agenda. The next Crime Watch meeting will be Wednesday, May the 11th at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. Our next council meeting will be Monday, May 16th at 7 p.m. It will also be here at Smith Park Shelter House. Uh, the Memorial Day walk will occur on Saturday, May 28th. That will start at the IGA at 11.30 a.m. and that walk proceeds to the New Carlisle Cemetery where there will be a, a, a ceremony there. So that is open to the public. We encourage anyone who can do that to come walk for that ceremony. Pool opening day will be Saturday, May 28th at noon. Come support your community pool. City offices will be closed on Monday, May the 30th, 2016 for Memorial Day. And I have a question for council or anybody who knows, when is the next joint government meeting scheduled? Yeah, he has that written yeah, yeah, You got yeah, it? Maybe. I just wanted to add it. May 31st, 6.30 p.m. I don't know where it's at, though. Does that sound right, Will? <clears throat> I've got it written down on some of the past when we said it. Oh, May 31st? May 31st, 6.30. That's what I got in my book. Tuesday night? Yes. Yes, yes. Because of the at, holiday. Location at to the, be determined. At the Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. At the Kamsa. High school? Yes. <laughs> Is the date correct, though? Yes. Let me go over that again. The next joint government meeting, which is a meeting of this council, the Tecumseh School Board, County Commissioners, uh, Bethel Township Trustees, occurs about every three months. It'll be May 31st at, uh, did we say 6.30? Mm -hmm. 6.30. 6.30 p.m. at Tecumseh <clears throat> High School. Narrow conference room. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Uh, before we move on, does anyone else have any comments or questions tonight before we, we are going to have to move into an executive session? I'll read that. Okay, we're going to move into an executive session uh, to adjourn into an executive session for the sole purpose of the consideration of the following matter to discuss matters pertaining to the collect collective bargain bargaining. So we need a I need a motion, motion. from council to into the executive session. Second. Who made it, Mr. McIntyre? Mr. McIntyre and then Mr. Reynolds. Hey, you didn't go. Did you guys have something else? Second from? Mr. Reynolds. Mr. Reynolds. Don't we have to declare that after we come back in that we would be voting yeah, possibly? I was going to say that after. Thank we you. did the vote. That's what I said.
Yes, sir. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. Craybach. Yes. Mr. Lowry. Rick Lowry. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Pass the seven to zero. And then we will do a, a quick five minute break and then we'll continue. I will share that once the executive session is over, we will come back into regular session and there'll be a vote on ordinance 16 16 P for the executive session. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you, everybody. If you'd like to have those signed, you can go ahead and go then if you'd like. Sir, when you're ready. Ordinance 16-16E, an ordinance approving a contract between the cities AFSCME -S mm -hmm. chapter and the city of New Carlisle for a three-year period and declaring an emergency. Mr. Mayor, I move we accept ordinance 16-16E. Second. Second by Mr. McIntyre. Second by Mr. McIntyre. Are you ready? Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yep. Mr. McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. Craybacher. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. Beck. Yes. Passes seven zero. All right. Any right. other uh Questions? Make a motion, Mayor. Go ahead. Whoa. You can have it. Mr. Craybacher, motion to adjourn. I just jumped. Is that adjourned? Adjourned. Craybacher. That's still recording.